What's up? Welcome to our next installment of Each Within Each. So, as we build out Each Within Each, Venus is the source of life. It is the feminine. It is the womb of creation, right? Whereas you have the primordial darkness, which in some ways is feminine or masculine. Venus is life. Venus is the ruler of illumination of the experience of being alive, right? So the Venus of Aries, in this case, vices of the mind or of the body, sadness, weariness of life, impure love, especially with Mars. So if you bring in the Venus of Aries into a love spell with somebody who's Mars or Aries, be careful because this isn't going to go very nicely for somebody who is going to get fucked up as a result of that particular spell. So as you conjure Venus with Aries, just be aware that you need to balance out the the want to do vice, the aggression of it, the, the stuff that's not going to connect with that individual very well. Whereas when you do this stuff for Venus, it's the rise of fortune. It is firm. It is a foundation with Taurus, right? So uh, dangerous passions from women in low estate. So be careful of what you do with what you're doing, right? Like you, Venus is about love, about life and about things that'll prolong for life. But if you use it to go after women in this particular way, uh, don't slut it up too much, right? But you could with Taurus because by inviting Venus to come and cause life, to cause the sexuality, the passion, the rapture of joy of all of those things, right? Those are good for some, but for some they're bad. So uh, Pretty in Pink is a good movie that represents this, this concept um, of the Venus of Taurus in action as a situational condition. Uh, Venus in Gemini is going to be the goodness of wisdom refinement of ingenious mind and especially with mercury and elevating its dignity so again with venus and gemini they want two minds so you're separating out between that which is a good life and that which is a not so good life where are you going to come to be in the happy middle between what's your ideal life and what's your bad life right what does your good life look like what does your bad life look like and which path of that do you walk as a result um and then with cancer, we have greed, abandonment, uh, gross voluptuousness. So while you have life, while you have the cancer aspect to it, you've got the fluid motion, the flow to it, right? It can get gross. Let's just be real. Like, people need to wash. <laughs> so again, whatever will... will cancer's fishes so <laughs> that's that just don't be a slut don't be a hoe bag okay just understand that when you're tempering this stuff with the energies of cancer and venus yeah you're gonna get that that fluid motion towards a relationship that direction towards being of use towards your end goal of communion with somebody else right um the venus of leo is vices and learning to exist it is frequent straits of good reputation, uh, modest fortunes. It's it's focused. It's the like I said before, it's like the, the sun is to Leo, the lion, the, the guiding strength, the foundation of it, the force of it. Right. But under Venus, it's the feminine form of it. It's the receptive form of it. It's the nurturing side of it. It's not the Mars Aries warlike state. It's the it's going to protect its homeland. It's going to protect its kingdom. It's going to protect its pride. It's going to protect its family unit. Whatever is its thing to protect, that's what it does. And it is the life that's led when all of those things are stable. So it might not get to the top of the pyramid, but it's got a pretty good foundation, right? In Virgo, we've got dangerous relationships with people of low ambitions. Um disappointment uh, so whereas the Venus of Leo it provides a purpose to protection 
Venus and Virgo is going to just be the negative side of that. It's not, it's not that it's necessarily bad always. It's just that when you use Venus and Virgo together, that, that, that'll be like when you're conjuring up spirits of the dead mobsters, right? It's like, I got an offer you can't refuse. Like, <laughs> that's what you can do with it. So if you need to force a change of something, you need to work directly on something, you can use the life quality within Venus and Virgo to bring that out to make those threads occur. And so as you go to Venus of Libra, it's your spirit of justice, but it's dangers of adversity, right? Dangerous p passions for people of low degrees. Like it, it's, it's like very classist where this comes from, but effectively it doesn't want people that are stable to be interacting with crazy street people, right? If you're interacting with the crazy street people, they're crazy street people. Like the infrastructure around them has failed the community around them has failed. And as a result of that failure, um, the way that they think, the way that they act, the way that they behave, isn't going to necessarily be good for anybody, right? It's, it's when you have an estate or you have stuff, right? Like your apartment's filled with a bunch of stuff versus who's out on the curb with a tent and a shopping cart, right? It's what will they do to you and just take from you because they themselves do not have? So when you're working with Venus and Virgo, be aware of that. What will they take that is not theirs to take? And that's what you need to balance out. That's, that's, that's that next level of... It's not about the person, it's about the behavior of the person. They could be just fine and dandy on their own in their own natural environment, but under the right conditions, they become a danger to you and to others. So you have to balance that state out. So again, that's why it's the scales on that one. Um, so for Scorpio, it is violent character, quarrelsome, proud, uh, stops at nothing to satisfy that urge. So in this case, again, it is the life path. It is what you are driven to do for focus. So if you want to cause an obsession spell for something or to someone, then you would use the Virgo, uh, or the, sorry, the Scorpio of Venus in order to entrain that path of character choice, of behavioral choice, so that what you do, how you do it, and why you do it, it's all been given purpose. It's all been focused in on, right? With Capricorn, it's the gentleness. It's the love of the table, the love of luxury, refinement, um, it's also perverse, it's dangerous, uh, danger of adulteries. So with Capricorn, you get, again, it's a, it's a Saturn sign, so Venus of Saturn, you get gentleness and it's the sensation, it's the, the gluttony, the, you want to be dripping in whatever fabulous silks or what have you that you can, you want to be able to enjoy whatever you want, basically, and the means by which you get it. Um, but it does carry with it inherent dangers of dangerous associations, because to get those things and to stay in a state of refinement, you have to necessarily do things that would reinforce those refinements. Like, what are you doing for work? What are you doing to include that in your application of things, right? So the Venus of Aquarius, as you conjure it up, is the a feminine type of inertia. It is the fornication and the adultery. So whereas Capricorn is the environmental luxury, Aquarius with the Venus state is going to be the actual sex aspect of it because it's going to be the flow, it's the fluid. You're trying to achieve orgasm. You're trying to cause those things. So using Aquarius ingredients in your love spells or in your spells of drawing or attraction, things like that, you do have that available to you as well. And with Pisces, that's gonna be knowledge and wisdom and an aptitude for the study of low, or sorry, study of the law. Good reasons of power, ingenious mind, mixed unhappiness, uh, disregard for people for uprisings, near neighbors, uh, relatives, um, subordinates, uh, 
danger danger from people. So here's the thing. Pisces, again, it's it's about what you're doing and why you're doing it. So if you're going to conjure the life aspect of Pisces, in this case, it's the mob mentality. While you yourself are the individual within the mob, the herd mind of the mob does stuff that's not good necessarily. Not bad, it is dangerous. Riots are bad, okay? Like, riots are bad, those kinds of things are bad. Going through the Venus states of those things is an application and an understanding of those. So that way what you do, why you do, and how you do becomes the knowledge and the wisdom. But who you tell, why you tell, what you're doing with it, when you tell, that becomes dangerous. So the only three things that we have left to do is to cover the Venus of Mercury, which diminishes mental misfortunes. Yeah, so the Venus of Mercury, you can use that as life progresses. You can make the memories of stuff fade. Um, discernment of true faith and diminishes judgment. This is the communication. So it, it can dull your... It's like being drunk. So if you're going to conjure something for the Mercury of Venus, that's the one you want to use if you want to cause an inebriated state. Right? So if you want to get into somebody's dreams in their head, you can use Venus and Mercury to crack open their subconscious. And Jupiter, in this case, is the protection from high risk. So what will protect your risk? Or what will, when you act in life, what will you do to protect yourself? What will you do to have your dominion, have your kingdom, right? It's that actions that you take that will allow you to overcome in high risk. And then the moon is uh, infidelity in marriage. It is adultery and the danger of being brought down uh, to crimes provoked by sensual passions. So that's going to be, are you paying a hooker? Straight up. Like, be careful with that one. So Venus in its feminine state and moon in its feminine state draws out the lack of commitment right it it it's it's the thing of polyamory like a good old-fashioned bacchanal right like just everybody's fucking in every hole right like just whatever those are the energies that you get and like discussed before each within each the sun it's a focus of life it's a focus of the love you can you can get that sunbeam directly on somebody with mars it's the right thought in action towards that state of love right towards the state of life what do you think life is to you the thing you do to go act on your life is the thing what happens when mars and venus come together and then the saturn states are when they transform right what is going to cause transformation through your love what is it that you can do that will cause transformation so much that what you're doing with your life with your passion with your love with your life becomes the thing that transforms others right so channeling the venus states of saturn the dark aspects of Saturn, causing those transformations, causing those changes, right? So, I appreciate you. And this concludes our chat on Venus. Last up, Mercury, my friends. Alrighty, stay safe.